Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia, and I would like to welcome from Carefree Medical, Dr. Farhan Badi. Thank you for being part of the show, sir. Nice to be with you. Thanks for having me. And so the first thing I'd like to start with each and every time is talking about what the mission of Carefree Medical is. Sure. So we are a nonprofit organization that is focused on providing high quality medical, dental, and optometry care to low income, underserved, and uh, under uh, insured or uninsured folks across Metro Lansing. So how did you come to be a part of Carefree? What was, uh, what was the journey? So my journey actually started when I was in medical school. Uh, the founder of Carefree, Dr. Barry Saltman, came to MSU and gave a sort of a guest lecture about who he was and what he was up to. And at that time, Carefree was about four years old. And um, I was pretty uh, sick and tired of reading books all day long. So uh, he said, you know, I'd love for you to volunteer. And I signed up. So I started coming to Carefree about once a week during uh, my, the late end of my first year and then into my second year of medical school. Uh, you know, practicing how to interview patients and, you know, physical exam skills. And I fell in love with it. And Dr. Saltman kind of turned into the grandpa that I never had. So we became very close. And about six months into that, he said, you know what, son, I'm not going to be around forever. So how would you like to have this place someday when you finish? And at that point, I still had like, you know, at least five years of training left to go. But um, we committed to each other very early in the process. Oh, so... The, he already had that in place because I, I was just going to, I was wondering how the transition from him to you went. I mean, I know that he's passed on, but that transition was, was smooth or you, you I mean, it was, it was incredibly smooth. So I graduated my residency training in family medicine in, uh, uh, on June 30th of 2015. And July 1st of 2015, I became CEO and medical director of Carefree Medical. Uh, uh, so the very next day, July 1, I, I hit the ground running. And we had a lot of time um, in between, um, you know, my second year of medical school, which was, what, 2007 and 2008. Uh, we had a lot of time to plan our transition so that uh, when I completed my training, uh, I would be ready to go. The staff already knew who I was, the staff who was there at the time. Uh, and I had helped uh, bring in, you know, a new office manager to help manage the staff back then. And uh, the board of directors was already on board with, with me running the, the organization. Uh, Dr. Saltman was in his early 70s at the time, early to mid-70s, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we... Uh, we got started right away. That's incredible. Now, when you 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 mentioned that when you started with Carefree, that you fell in love with it. What was it about it that you fell in love with? What? So, I think what's most fulfilling about medicine to me is the service component. Uh, it, to be able to make such a big difference, such a big impact on the lives of people. I mean, many of our patients went much of their entire adult lives without access to health care. And then they got health insurance for the first time through the Affordable Care Act, through Obamacare, when Michigan adopted Medicaid expansion. And so now all of these people that didn't have anything, now they've got Medicaid. And uh, so the vast majority of our patients are overwhelmingly thankful, grateful for the services that they have. 
Uh, you know, they they feel very happy to be able to have their chronic medical conditions appropriately addressed. And uh, and so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of fulfillment in that for me. You know, I could have been a doctor anywhere. I could have started a private practice in a rich suburb and those folks need doctors too. Don't get me wrong. But for me individually, it very much aligned with who I am and what my faith teaches me to do, which is, you know, uh, really focus on service, uh, to others. And so, um, uh, it, it was a, a perfect opportunity for me. I mean, that's awesome. And then also, um, what, I know that you said that you had things in play for the transition and, you know, you worked for several years on developing that type of uh, structure. But once you went into the role of being the CEO, what things did you want to, what new goals or what, what new things you, did you, um, want to move into implementing first or expanding to anything like that? What, what was the, what are the new things that you wanted to hit the ground running with? Sure. Uh, there were a lot of opportunities for growth. Uh, Dr. Saltman started carefree in his retirement and uh, uh, there, there was quite a bit that, you know, a, a young graduating physician could take on, that a physician at the end of his career was unable to take on. So uh, my goal was to expand the scope of our clinic uh, and of our organization, really, not just the medical clinic, but also the dental clinic and our optometry clinic, uh, and to expand our footprint in the community. And we've done that. Um, Carefree, when I started or when I took over, didn't really take care of children. But now pediatrics is a big part of my practice. I love taking care of adults and children and the whole family. That's why I went into family medicine, because I can take care of the parents and the children from birth all the way through old age. And uh, so we've really expanded the number of children that we see. And, you know, and when newborn babies are born at Sparrow and they don't have a clinic to follow up with, you know, carefree is at the top of that list uh, that, that parents call. Uh, from the hospital, uh, either hospital, both Sparrow and McLaren, they they send patients to us, and we get probably one, at least one newborn baby per week from the hospital. Mm. Uh, we we've also expanded the the breadth and the depth of the mental health services that we provide because mental health is a huge passion of mine, and in the the patient population that we serve their access to mental health care is so limited. Uh, and so if they don't get the help that they need in primary care, they're not going to get it elsewhere by and large, uh, unless they're severely mentally ill, in which case they can get into the community mental health. Uh, but otherwise, um, it's really, really challenging to see a psychiatrist when you have a Medicaid insurance card. Uh, and even folks with commercial insurance have a really a uh, long wait time to get into psychiatry. So the more that we can handle ourselves, the better service that we can provide for our patients. So we do really complex psychiatric uh, conditions here that you might not find in your traditional family practice setting. I take care of patients with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, uh, personality disorders, in addition to the, you know, the run of the mill anxiety and depression. Um, and, uh, and I think we do a really good job of, of keeping people stable and, and empowering people to uh, reach their full potential and be able to do things like get a job and keep it uh, because they're, they're emotionally uh, healthy. And so uh, one of the things that I like to say is that Carefree is in the business of economic development because we are powering that engine locally by uh, keeping the workforce healthy by allowing them to get their, you know, diabetes under control and get their blood pressure under control and get their mental health under control so that they can become productive members of society once again. That's really, that's really, it's really great. And also 
Speaking of community and community development, a few years back, you moved the clinic to um, just outside of downtown Lansing. Um, was that strategic? Uh, and how has that helped you do what you what you're able to do and what you've been what you just talked about? Yeah. Well, I think one of the first goals that I identified when I took over the business was uh, moving us into a larger venue to fray, for us to be able to have the financial wherewithal to expand our footprint, to expand the amount of services that we provide and the number of people that we care for. And when I took over Carefree, we weren't really in the best financial circumstances. We were, we were getting by, but, you know, there were some months that were tough. There were some months where, you know, like many nonprofits, I was worried that, you know, we might not be able to make payroll. And uh, we've come a long way since then. You know, grace of God, we never defaulted on our uh, obligations to our staff and our employees. But we, we kind of were sweating bullets for a little while. Uh, and fast forward, you know, now six years um, and uh, six and a half. And we have the flexibility to do things like, uh, uh, you know, strategic planning and, and investment in our infrastructure and, and moving into a new building where we, uh, we tripled our square footage by moving into this building. Uh, I had seven patient rooms in the medical clinic uh, in the old building. And now I have the capacity for triple that here. And our dental clinic also uh, is much larger. It's, it's a state-of-the-art clinic. We're very proud of the way all of our clinics look because when you walk in, you don't feel like you are in uh, a, a underserved clinic. You feel like you're in a modern-day uh, clinic. You you wouldn't know that that it's carefree medical, you know, uh, some folks attach a stigma to the type of work that we do. But when you come to our clinic, you feel like you're in any other doctor's office that you'd find anywhere else, whether it's Okemos or, or what have you. Uh, our, our facilities are really uh, welcoming and really nice. And that was what I wanted uh, because in our old building, you know, we may do, but it wasn't the most welcoming facility. It was the best that we could do at the time with the resources that we had. But now uh, we, we've really modernized our facility. And with that, we've been able to expand uh, all the types of services that we provide and the number of patients that we're providing care for has also significantly increased as a result. Do you feel that by, by staying in, by potentially if you stayed in the old building, let's say, uh, that actually, or staying in the old building stifled maybe some type of progress growth um other than physical but maybe even the fact that you'd be able to um provide more stuff for more people um and that generate revenue of course i mean uh we only had seven rooms so mm -hmm. i wasn't able to to do things that i wanted to do i wanted to hire a new doctor but i didn't have the rooms to put her in right I didn't physically have the space to bring in a new doctor, but uh, by moving into this building with the, the wonderful help of our board of directors, which is very supportive uh, of our organization and of me as an individual, by moving into this building, we were able to bring on a full-time uh, doctor partner for me, Dr. Luber, and she's been great. Uh, and so having additional providers allows us to serve additional people. It's, it's very simple. And and the need for our services only continues to grow. And so we are, uh, and we've been the second largest safety net entity in the entire county, mm -hmm. second only to the Ingham County Health Department. And so uh, we're very uh, proud of uh, and humbled by the, the opportunity to do the work that we do. And, and uh, you know, we're looking for continued opportunities for growth. Uh, we're in the process of, of applying to become a federally qualified health center, which would entitle us to federal funding for the first time. Currently, we don't, currently we don't receive any federal funding, but uh, once we get that designation, 
uh, God willing, then by summer of 2022, we will uh, have that uh, designation and we'll be able to have even more potentially uh, financial flexibility to hire another provider, another physician or nurse practitioner or PA to, to ser- help us serve even more people. Now, being a, the CEO of Carefree, as you're also um, on staff with Sparrow. I am. So I did all of my training at Sparrow. Uh, even when I was in medical school at MSU, I did all of my clinicals at Sparrow. And then I did three years of family medicine training at Sparrow and then graduated. So uh, I'm well tied in with Sparrow. I should say, however, that one of our largest corporate donors is McLaren. And, and mm-hmm. Carefree really appreciates the support that we've gotten from both hospitals. And they do partner with each other to help us because by supporting Carefree, we're supporting them. Uh, it's much more financially uh, uh, effective. It's much more cost effective for us to provide care to patients uh, than it is for those folks to end up in the hospital ER where they eat up time and resources and it's so much more expensive, many fold time more expensive to, to receive care in the ER especially primary care than it is uh, here in a clinic like mine. So uh, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, Yes, I'm sorry. And that being said, you know, I do uh, uh, still work at Sparrow. I'm a pediatric hospitalist there. So, you know, when children are sick enough to require admission to the hospital, I'm one of the doctors who takes care of them. Uh, I do that job kind of as a second job on the weekends. So I work I work per diem, and so on average, I'll work one or sometimes two weekends per month uh, in that capacity. I was wondering how you're able to fit that all in. That was, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, oh, he must have an extra day. So that's 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 awesome. And I, and so with the McLaren partnership, is that part of the um, community partnerships that you're talking about? that help you um, develop? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that was actually one of my early ambitions when I took over Carefree was to expand uh, the partnerships and to create new partnerships in the community, uh, uh, mutually beneficial partnerships. So we, we, um, went to the city of Lansing, uh, Mayor Bernero at the time, who uh, started uh, a grant annually that the city of Lansing gives us to support our clinic. And that that grant has continued to this day under Mayor Shore. Uh, I met with leadership from Sparrow and McLaren when I took over, actually even before I took over, to um, uh, request uh, an executive, a member of their executive team to be on our board of directors. And that has happened. So we have board representation from both of the local hospitals, uh, as well as, you know, board representation from many other community partners. Uh, And and that's how you get it done. It really does take a village. Uh, And we've got a lot of good people in Metro Lansing who care deeply about the health and well-being uh, of of everyone. And so uh, we've been very fortunate to tap into that goodwill uh, and help our uh, help our business uh, grow so that we can help even more people. And speaking of helping folks, I mean, the pandemic really probably tested a lot of uh, things that you put forth as well as tested some things that um, you probably didn't expect. So talk to me a little bit about some of the, um, the, peaks and valleys that you experienced through the pandemic, what you were able to try to, I know that the pandemic phrase of the, or the phrase of the pandemic is pivot or whatever. What are some of the things that you had to do um, near the beginning and what, what you had to like implement to try to try to curb some of this? So, of our three clinics, medical, dental, and optometry, our medical clinic never closed because we were an essential service. We were in the business of 
keeping people healthy and out of the hospital. And that was vital because hospital beds back then, and unfortunately, even yet today, are a very precious resource. And so uh, we were highly motivated to keep our patients with diabetes, to keep their blood sugar under good control, to keep people's blood pressure under good control, to keep people's mental health under good control so that uh, they wouldn't get sick enough to require hospitalization and take up a hospital bed that could otherwise be used to take care of someone suffering from COVID. So uh, we never closed. Now we did for the first month, month and a half of the pandemic very early on uh, transition to a heavy telehealth model where two out of our three full-time providers, Dr. Lubeyer and our nurse practitioner, Amanda, they were conducting essentially all of their visits uh, over telehealth, over like video chat. We instituted that and it was a way to continue to take care of people who were otherwise afraid to leave their homes, you know, uh, uh, and even still today, people are afraid of going out in public because they don't want you know, to catch COVID. And we didn't have vaccines back then. So uh, there was a lot of fear and uh, people didn't want to come in, uh, some of them. So we transitioned to telehealth uh, for that first short amount of time. And then gradually, um, you know, both of, the, both of those two full-time providers started opening up more and more of their schedule for in-person visits. And I personally stayed in person throughout because there were some people that you, not every kind of visit can be conducted over a phone or over a, a, a webcam. There are people that you still need to, to see in person and touch and look at. Uh, and so my personal schedule stayed in person throughout. Um, our dental clinic and our optometry clinic did temporarily close for a, a month and a half or two months in the beginning of the pandemic because um, they weren't an essential service. Uh, and uh, dentists and optometrists are in much closer proximity to patients than doctors are. And so we abided, uh, we certainly abided by all of the, the mandates that the governor put down and dentists and optometrists were in a separate category. Uh, and so uh, we, uh, we, we closed them. And, and that obviously hurt our revenue, that hurt our business like every other business. Uh, Nonprofits and for profits alike were hurting during COVID, especially in the beginning, because you know every business makes a budget at the beginning of the year, and COVID blew a hole in our budget like it did for every other business. So we had to uh, regroup and, and rethink what to do, and we were very early in applying for the PPP uh, funding, the, the grant funding from the federal government, and, and we got that and that helped keep the doors open while we, you know, looked for uh, and applied for other grant funding to, to help, uh, help, help us meet our, our bottom line. And so what was, uh, what were some of the things that you learned organizationally um, trying to go through the pandemic um, things that you didn't think you'd had to do, um, you know, from, from your standpoint, I mean, from a, a medical standpoint, that's one way, but organizationally, what were some of the things that you had to learn as a leader leading through this pandemic from a nonprofit standpoint? Well, from a business standpoint and a human standpoint, I had to maintain the trust of my employees uh, because they were the courageous heroes. They were the frontline heroes, just like the grocery store workers and the hospital workers, people that were coming into work every day with their masks on, uh, hoping that they didn't catch this uh, COVID, particularly before the vaccines came out. And so we had to institute a large number of of safety precautions in order to keep our, number one, our staff, and then number two, our patients safe. And so building that trust with, with staff uh, was uh, a really good exercise uh, in, in, in team building. 
and, uh, and relationship building. And I think that that's something we can carry on with us even post pandemic, hopefully someday soon. So what's on the horizon for carefree going forward? So hopefully once we get this federally qualified health center designation uh, and we start receiving some federal funding in addition to all the funding that we uh, secure year after year, that we'll be able to do even more. Um, at one point in time, Carefree had a behavioral health clinic uh, early during my tenure. And uh, the, the grant funding for that uh, expired. And so we basically had to close um, our behavioral health clinic several years ago. And we really want to be able to provide uh, behavioral health uh, therapy internally. Uh, and so that increased federal funding, one of my goals for 22 is to be able to bring that back, is to be able to, by the end of the year, uh, be providing uh, not just the, the medication therapy that, that I and my colleagues provide, but also that, that psychotherapy, that, that, uh, that one-on-one -on -one counseling, and, and hopefully even uh, group sessions. Uh, that's really important to help people achieve wellness. Uh, with their mental health. So that's the biggest goal that's on the horizon is expanding and, and doing more uh, in behavioral health. And then in our dental clinic, we've got so much space uh, and we have a dentist that we employ three days a week and we can definitely, uh, we definitely have space to bring on another one or two. So we're actively looking uh, for uh, one or two more dentists to employ. Uh, so that we can do even more uh, in that realm. You know, we want to be able to do dentures, for example, and that's something that we haven't been able to do for a long time. But having more dentists on staff uh, would give us the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, likewise, in optometry, uh, we can definitely use more uh, optometrists, uh, volunteers, as well as paid. So uh, we're looking to do all of those things. That's exciting. That's exciting stuff coming forward. That's great. So we're coming to to, to the end of the program, but for those that do, for those folks that don't know who you are or you know much about your organization other than what you just said for this half hour, what's the best way to reach you? So carefreemedical.com. Uh, we've got a good website. Uh, I'd like it to be better. It's also a goal in 22 to update and renovate our website, but uh, that's how you can find us and reach us and uh, send us an email or give us a phone call. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of us is through our website. And if you don't have, if you don't have a smartphone or if you don't have uh, access to a website, uh, just call our phone number 517-887-5922. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Abadi. That was really great to have you on the show. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great to be with you. And thank you, everybody, for again taking some time to listen to our program. Don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple weeks. And if there's someone you know of that you would like to hear about their journey, or if you want to talk about your journey in the nonprofit world, please email us at missioncontrol at introduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a positive review. Thank you again and see you next time in the Control Center. Have a good day.